Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm the designer and architect of the Maximo BI or Business Intelligence tools. In today's demo, I want to highlight some of the new features available in the Maximo 7.6 release. This feature is the new KPI template application. The KPI template application is intended for our administrators, those individuals who create and maintain the KPIs for the organization. The KPI template application supplements the existing KPI manager application by making it easier for the administrators to create and maintain KPIs. So let me sign into Maximo here as one of our administrators, Wilson, and let's access the KPI application and give an overview of how it works. The KPI template application is accessible from the administration menu admin KPI KPI templates and there's a few KPI templates that are delivered to you out of the box let's open one of them up so you can see how they generally work so a KPI template the premise is to create a SQL statement and define variables and then substitute each one of those variables with a value that will produce individual KPI records so if you look at this individual KPI template, the difference between this and the KPI manager application is it includes the variables. The variables must be defined within this KPI SQL for it to be identified as a KPI template. And we identify the variables as a dollar sign and a bracket. So in this individual template, I have a few different variables, one over here for work type and one over here for priority. Once those variables are defined, you come over and associate the variable to an object or an object in an attribute. And then in the bottom portion of the screen is where you take the individual variables and generate multiple KPIs from them. So in this case with my work type and work priority, I come over here and generate eight different KPIs that have all these different values and I navigate that simply by going through the individual rows and I can see I have EM work orders priority two I have a corrective maintenance work order priority one so what this all correlates to is I'm now going to look at the schedule compliance and completed work orders by eight different variations of work type and work priority to do that, I simply come here and click Generate KPIs. That tells me that eight KPIs were created from that template, and I can see those KPIs by going to the KPI Manager application. Once I'm over here, I'm just going to do that filter on my template number, and those are the eight individual KPIs that I created. Very, very streamlined way to create and also maintain those KPIs over time. So let's create a KPI template ourselves and let's imagine that we want to look at what our work order backlog is. And I could go into the KPI template and create that SQL from um, scratch, but I always forget a parentheses or some other component. So I'm going to have Maximo do the work for me. And I'm going to go to the work order tracking application. And I'm going to come in here and I've got a query where I'm looking at my work orders in Bedford. But let me, you know, reduce that query a little bit by adding some additional filters. Well, I don't really want to look at my task work orders um, and maybe I don't want to look at history. So I'm going to grab that also and I'm going to reduce or skinny down my query a little bit and I'm going to click find. Now This is some of the power of Maximo. Here's my where clause so let me grab that right directly from the application and I'm going to simply copy that. Now I'm going to go back over here, go back to our KPI template application, and let's insert a new record. I insert a new record and I'm going to I'm going to give it a name like woe back so I can quickly identify it. And so this is a work order backlog for a demo, a demo that we're doing today. What's the application? Well, I was just in work work order tracking, so I'm going to say that's the application that I want it registered to. I'm interested in a decimal format because I want the number of work orders that are, are in my back, backlog. Excuse me. So I want to do a select count. Oops. 
of Wonum, whoops, Wonum, this is why I copy and paste most of the time from work order. I'll bring over that query. Let's take a look and see what I have. Select count Wonum from work order. Well, I'm missing my where, where, and there's all the information there. But now it's not going to take it. If I try to save this, it's going to give me an error message because there's no variables defined. So now that I've lost that, I'm going to edit my value, bring it back in there, and now what I'm going to say is I'm going to change my site ID and make that a variable. So use the dollar sign in the bracket, and I put in the attribute value, which is site ID, in my closing bracket. Let me get rid of this extra. There we go. And let me add another one. Um, and work type equals dollar sign bracket work type close it. Let's make sure this looks a little bit better. Select count from work order. There's my where clause. Here's my variables, work type, and site ID. Oh, it looks like I have too many. And work type is or in site ID. Looks like I had a few too many there. Let's try saving that see if that's a little better. And it liked it. Okay, so again, there's my variables. So now what I need to do is start defining what those variables are. So I click New Row and the SQL is parsed, looks for the variable names and it auto populates you, them for you. So now they need to be associated with the object. So in this case I'm looking for my work order object. These are optional fields if you don't have an attribute that it's associated with. We have some examples here where we do that in the max groups um, object. I can also come down here, there's my site ID, again it populated it for me, so I'm looking for my work order, and my attribute name over here, site ID, oh I knew I spelled that wrong, site, excellent, I'm just going to save that. So again, now those variables are defined. I don't know if you've noticed, but when I put in that attribute, it automatically brings in that data type. That data type is going to be so important as we define our KPIs because it wants to make sure that I'm inputting what that value is. So in here I've de defined um, my first KPI. Let's put in a couple of target values. These are the um, red, yellow, green values that you would have displayed or be measured against is probably a better word. Let me scroll down here a little bit more and let's start filling in for our first KPI. What do I want my work type to be? I want an EM work order and I'm going to go with site Bedford. Let's do new row. Imagine that I had, you know, a number of different sites that I'm uh, responsible for, Buffalo, or that I have different people that might be responsible for. Again, it's auto-populating those values. Some of my sites might have different levels for EM work orders and PM work orders. So let's change it up a little bit. Let's cut PM in Buffalo. And then what other work type can we have? Let's go with um, CM for Buffalo. And now I'm going to save that. The other thing I want to do before I um, leave this is I want to populate my long description. The long description is really powerful and I'm just going to do a copy and paste from some text that I have. And what this will do is it'll highlight the value of how the KPI is calculated, why it's important to the business, to the end user who's, who may be using this on a daily or monthly or quarterly basis. We all have a lot to remember so let's make sure they have that information so they don't call up the IT department all the time looking for it. Once I have that all um, information filled out, I'm going to generate my KPIs. gives me a message here that I generated four for the work order back template. Well, let's go to KPI Manager and take a look at those. So I'll go here, Recent Applications, KPI Manager, and we called it, let's see if I can bring it up, and here it is. Here's the, the four individual KPIs that I created. I'm going to open this guy up. Here's my Bedford and I'll say Bedford EM. Now I'm going to make this available so I can show a, wh what the end user would actually see. 
And let's make this available for an ops manager who just happens to be Mr. Nolan. And I'm going to save that. So you can see how quickly I can now navigate and give all the security access, all this different access that's available. Let me sign out of this and let me sign in as a different user. This is the end user so you can start to see from that KPI template what will this individual user see. Well if I go to the KPI viewer application, here's that Bedford EM one that I just made available. I open it up and look at that. There's a long description immediately available so whether I access this KPI on a daily, monthly, or quarterly basis I always know why it's important and what its purpose is um, to the business. So again I want to thank you very much for your time today. That's a very quick demo of the new KPI template application and also give you a preview of the KPI viewer application. Thank you so much.